As Russia continues its invasion of Ukraine, Haas F1 has been forced to dismiss Nikita Mazepin amid the increasing pressure on the American team to terminate the F1 racer's contract. But who could take his place? So let's just dive into the video to find out the answer. So who could be replacing the Russian F1 driver? The 23-year-old driver was certainly the worst driver on the grid last season, and he sparked controversy even before his F1 debut, when a video of him groping a woman's breast surfaced. However, if you're a withdrawals, Haas's future wouldn't be at the risk of financial collapse, and it's reported that several drivers have already expressed interest in replacing Mazepin if he is fired. The 56-year-old Haas's team principal has stated that reserve driver Pietro Fittipaldi, the grandson of former F1 winner Emerson, who is in his third season with Haas, will get a first call. If Haas knows it won't be able to have Mazepin for the entire season, it may choose for a stronger driver or someone with great F1 experience. The two alternatives for from the latter group are Aston Martin reserve Nico Hulkenberg, who stood in for that team twice in 2020, placing 7th and 8th, or Antonio Giovinazzi, who has links to the team via Ferrari and was dumped by Alfa Romeo late last year. However, if the team is merely searching for skills, Australian driver Piastri appears to be a perfect choice who may give more enthusiasm to the backmarker squad in the future. Piastri is currently the reserve driver for Alpine, but almost everyone in the F1 circuit feels he's talented talented enough for a race seat in 2022 after winning successive Formula 3 and 2 titles. Is Piastri the ideal choice for Haas? Mark Hughes, the motorsport journalist, stated that Oscar Piastri is certainly a perfect choice for replacing the Russian driver. He continued that, with the utmost respect for Antonio Giovinazzi and Nico Hulkenberg, they are well-known and extremely competent players. But Piastri, on the other hand, holds the potential of doing something exceptional. It happens that a new driver brings a whole different vibe to a team. Considering Gene Alisi at Tyrell, Mika Hakkinen at Lotus, Michael Schumacher at Benetton, and Sebastian Vettel at Toro Rosso. So you'd be surprised to know that despite Oscar Piastri's exceptional skills, it is still doubtful whether he'll be given a 2022 F1 drive with Gene Haas. The 20-year-old Australian racer revealed that his self-titled team wants someone with real experience to replace Nikita Mazepin. Fittipaldi competed in two races for Haas during the 2020 season, while Piastri and Darovala have never competed in Formula 1. Perhaps Haas would prefer an experienced driver, especially after its challenging 2021 with two rookies. Still, if Piastri can extract his potential, then he can definitely bring energy to the entire season. Haas would need to strike an agreement with Alpine in order to obtain the Aussie. We're curious to see who takes the place of the Russian driver on the circuit. Next, is Mazepin's future still in doubt? Nikita Mazepin's future with the American racing team still remains questionable as more sanctions are placed upon Russia due to the country's invasion of Ukraine. And after a long silence, Haas's team principal Gunther Steiner has finally released a statement on the Haas driver situation. He reportedly stated that the F1 driver situation must be resolved as soon as possible since it's still unclear whether the Russian would compete in the season opener in Bahrain in three weeks due to Ukraine's invasion. Although there have been no direct sanctions imposed on Mazepin, his father, or Ural Kali, the Russian bank payments have been suspended, which questions the Russian driver's ability to obtain a visa to travel the world. Due to this, Haas may be compelled to replace him. Haas's team principal stated that this issue needs to be resolved soon. He explained that they barely have control over the situation as the governments are involved and that the team needs to monitor the situation in Ukraine to see how it evolves. Now we have Mazepin's family's close connection with Vladimir Putin. On the third and last day of testing in Barcelona, Haas removed the logo of principal sponsor Ural Kali, a firm controlled by Mazepin's father, whose funding was the main reason for his place in the Haas team. Mazepin obtained funding from Eurocali, a Russian fertilizer company co-owned by Dmitry Mazepin. You'd be startled to know that the 23-year-old Russian driver is a close associate of Russian President Vladimir Putin. ESPN reported that Dmitry was one of the 37 business people that visited Putin last week at the Kremlin to discuss the sanctions imposed on Russia. Previously, we've also seen Nikita Mazepin wishing the Russian president on his birthday back in October 2020. The F1 driver also praised him for everything he has done for Russian sports. Haas F1's cars were painted red, white, and blue for the first two days of preseason testing in Barcelona. However, the Haas F1 team has also opted to remove the Russian flag branding off their car for the final day of preseason testing in Barcelona. Now, in other related news. According to Norris, McLaren's official preseason test was less than ideal. Lando Norris, the British F1 driver, has finally admitted that McLaren wasn't in a strong position to head into the season opener in Bahrain following a challenging official preseason test. 
best. The F1 driver, however, was optimistic that the British team could recover. Despite driving all three days of the test because his teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, was absent due to a positive COVID-19 test, the 22-year-old driver could only achieve 200 laps as brake issues severely hampered his team in the Bahrain desert. Nevertheless, day three concluded on a positive note for the Brighton, who posted the ninth fastest time in the field after 90 laps. Far from ideal, Norris said of McLaren's performance in Bahrain, he further stated that it wasn't the easiest test for him. He believed that the Barcelona test was a nice one, but they faced many more issues here, which drastically reduced the number of laps they would have achieved. But we're excited to announce that Norris has expressed confidence that McLaren would be able to overcome their braking troubles and will find a solution that'll allow them to meet their own lofty standards. The young F1 drivers stated that they have the ideal solutions for the problems. However, it's not going to be an easy fix as it'll take a lot of effort and time. Therefore, it would be a challenge for the team to get in good condition by next week. But we can't wait for McLaren to hit the ground running in the opening season of the Bahrain Grand Prix, all set to begin on March 20. Next, Botas confesses he avoided watching the episode of Drive to Survive that showed his departure from Mercedes. With the debut of its fourth season, Netflix's Formula One, Drive to Survive, has continued to enthrall viewers. Valtteri Botas, on the other hand, has revealed he has yet to watch the new series, which details his exit from the Mercedes team. So you'd be startled to know that Dances with Wolf, episode 8 of season 4 of Drive to Survive, focuses on the Mercedes decision in 2021 of whether to keep Botas and Lewis Hamilton together for a sixth straight season in 2022 or to promote Williams driver and protege George Russell. When asked during preseason testing in Bahrain whether he felt the representation of Mercedes contract wranglings in Drive to Survive was true, Botas responded that he hadn't watched any of it. Therefore, he doesn't really know. The 32-year-old F1 driver remarked that the show typically takes bits and pieces from several races and circumstances. So he's unsure what the show is exactly referring to. Botas' start to the season with Alfa Romeo has had several ups and downs, with the team hampered by multiple problems in Barcelona pre-season running. Despite an improved performance at the official pre-season test in Bahrain, Botas' final day in the C42 ended with a hydraulics issue that saw him pull up at the side of the track. It wasn't an ideal start, and Botas' Botas is visibly anxious as he prepares for the season's first race, the Bahrain Grand Prix, on March 20. Lastly, according to Hamilton, Red Bull looks ridiculously fast in 2022, but Mercedes is unquestionably the best team. The Mercedes driver, Lewis Hamilton, issued a defiant warning shot to Red Bull before the start of the 2022 season. Declaring that while his opponents may have looked fast in preseason testing, his Mercedes team still remains undoubtedly the finest team. He added that winning a record eighth driver's title would be mind-blowing to him. You'd be amazed to discover that despite losing the 2021 Drivers' Championship to Red Bull's Max Verstappen, Mercedes won the Constructors' Championship for the ninth time in a row last year. However, during the 2022 preseason testing, Mercedes struggled with bouncing issues on their all-new W13, while Verstappen set the fastest lap on the last day of Bahrain's official preseason test. During the Q&A session at the Expo 2020 Dubai event, he was asked about the pecking order ahead of the start of the season. Hamilton backed Mercedes to remain strong, especially in the face of intense opposition from their rivals. The 37-year-old F1 driver stated that the W13 will continue all week until the upcoming first Bahrain Grand Prix on March 18 through 20. He was also asked what winning that title would mean to him. Hamilton immediately replied, everything. He went on to say that it's difficult to tell what the future holds, but accomplishing something no one else has done before would be mind-boggling. Well, it definitely would be, and we hope to see him win. That's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.